We've been working through the utility stitches on the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2, working with the bar tacks and even the eyelets that are in this menu. What about these stitches here? Stitch 33, 34, and 35, you'll find these are mending stitches. And again, if you are unsure, touch the question mark and touch the stitch, and it will describe the differences between these three different styles. So there is this this one is probably the most common one, that's why it's first. It's gonna go back and forth pretty much at every single needle position. And if you see the reverse button pictured on the screen, that means you are gonna have control of how long you want that stitch to be. Touch it and then it will do the rest for you. This stitch here, as you select it on screen, 34 is actually just a stitch. It's gonna kind of almost like if you had a lot of open weave and you just need to kind of stitch over the top of it, but fairly close together. Speaking of which, I bet we could even have some fun with a little closer together stitch length. Never thought of altering that. I'm thinking decorative all of a sudden. So <laughs> and then 35, you'll notice that there's kind of the crisscross and the over the top straight line. So it's almost like it has an underlay stitching part of it. Once again, you'll have control of how long that will be. So let's take a look at how this is gonna start. We're gonna start with foot A with the IDF or integrated dual feed engaged. And I'll show you how we set the length for this stitch. So if your opening or rip is in your fabric, you do need to have something underneath it. You need to stabilize it, you need to iron on some interfacing, or putting another piece of fabric uh, behind the opening is key. So if your rip is here, you are noticing because of the black dot pictured on the screen that your stitching is gonna start in the upper left corner. And that's why the needle's all the way over here to the left side. So we're just gonna kind of pretend that we're covering something up in this area. And the first bit of stitching is the machine actually counting how many stitches forward you are taking. So if we go that far and touch the reverse button on the front of the machine, and then go ahead and stitch, you're gonna notice that it has counted. So if it had 12 stitches forward, it now has 12 stitches back and 12 stitches forward again. So each needle position is being filled up with a line of stitches forward for the mending stitch. Now you'll see that eventually your opening for stitching is just the width of your presser foot, which is on this machine, nine millimeters wide, which is nice now, the new width. But if your opening or rip or area you're covering is bigger than that, you're gonna find that it's gonna stop here and you're gonna lift up the presser foot, slide over and begin again. So you can overlap a few stitches and you could just keep going. Now you could see that if you had some matching thread, that practically looks like you have recreated the weave of the fabric so perfectly there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and I wanna actually do, uh, let's do one more of those little fun stitches. More, I just wanna see what that, the next one looks like. I, I've seen it, I was just, all of a sudden got a decorative little harebrained idea for it because it's going to be back and forth and I don't know why but using variegated thread could be kind of a fun option way to create kind of a background okay so that's just a straightforward stitch no different there look how nice that actually fills in but then the combination for stitch number 35 is the underlay and then the back and forth. So it is kind of the all in one combination. So definitely if you have some rips, and again, don't tell anybody your machine does mending, please don't. Um, <laughs> but if, since we know how to do it, it's gonna make that particular job really quick and easy and get you back to doing the creative projects you have in your mind.